Hey physics students, Mr. Rosentis here. I'm on page 60, page 60, Falling Objects. This is Unit 1, Chapter 2, page 60, and we're talking about falling objects. Alright, Unit 1, Chapter 2, page 60, we're talking about falling objects. Alright, free fall. Free fall and acceleration. Acceleration of gravity. Free fall and acceleration of gravity. That's the name of this. That's the name of this last little section in chapter two, section three. All right, a falling object. falling object under the sole influence of gravity has an acceleration has an acceleration of 9.8 one meters per second per second and we'll, we refer to that as meters per second squared and we know that we know those units for acceleration we've been talking about those units that's a number that is going to have to be put to memory we're going to use that quite a bit this value however this value depends this value depends on on the altitude and it depends on the density of the planet really and we'll later we'll talk about the force that causes this that causes this acceleration but for example on the moon the acceleration is only 1.62 meters per second squared. That's why the video, it's that's why on the video of the hammer and feather being dropped is easier to measure because the acceleration is much less. One thing that one thing that Galileo, one advantage Galileo didn't have is a is the moon or a vacuum chamber in order to prove what he's prove his theory, which was a brilliant theory, even though he couldn't he couldn't directly test it. But we're still talking about it today. Right. Now here we have a cliff. We have a stick man or stick woman. And this stick man or this stick woman has an object. And clearly, clearly, clearly it's accelerating. So don't forget that as it's moving, as it's moving down, moving in the negative direction, if it were to moving, if it were to be moving up, it would be in the positive direction. Okay? This, this distance we'll refer to as we'll refer to as y. Now, as long as long as we are given two of the three variables. We can calculate the rest. What are those three variables? Well, from the equation, change in t equals velocity final minus velocity initial 
over acceleration. Well, now we know acceleration as long as we're given one of these two variables, either velocity or time, we could we could certainly calculate the missing the missing uh, uh, the the uh, missing variable. Now we might use that, or I'll rearrange the equation for you. And the book did. I shouldn't take credit. The book rearranged it for us. Plus or minus velocity initial squared plus two times acceleration times the change in y. And we've already we already showed you what y is. Now what's convenient is if 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 y initial is the y initial is zero as we as we talked before all it is is two a times y and that very well might be the case so pay attention and and if it's zero that that makes it uh, that makes it all the more easy all right so I'm going to give a um, uh, a practice problem a go how about um, Practice F number two. Practice F number two. I'm on page 64. You want to have a look? So we're talking about a flower pot. This flower pot falls. This fall, uh, a flower pot falls. Uh, 25.0 meters above a sidewalk. Alright, now, first question. How fast is the pot moving when it hits the ground? Um, that question is written for you on page on page 64 so give it a look now what do we know well we know y equals 25.0 meters we know acceleration is 9.81 meters per second squared and we know that velocity initial is zero because it's sitting still on the windowsill so we are going to, we need to know how fast it's moving, so we need to know velocity. Velocity final is plus or minus the square root, and because it's, because it's, it's um, velocity initial is zero, remember velocity initial is zero, so make it, we'll just take the square root of 2ay, shall we? So velocity final equals the square root of 2 times the acceleration 9.81 meters per second squared times 25.0 meters point zero meters is important because we have to we have to watch our sig figs and if it says point zero meters we we have to honor that so velocity Final is the velocity final is 22.1 meters per second squared. We have three sig figs, three sig figs. We're good. All right, 22.1 meters per second. Now that we know velocity final, chances are they're going to ask us what is time. What is time? Because we need velocity final in order to calculate time. Remember that equation. Um, so the second part of this, part B, change in T equals velocity final minus velocity initial divided by acceleration. And the second part reads how much time does, it, does a passerby on the sidewalk below have to move out of the way before the flower pot hits the ground? Bingo, they do want to know time. So we we just we plug in our our velocity final value that we just calculated 22.1 meters per second and 
we subtract that from 0 meters per second divided by 9.81 which we have memorized because we're going to use it so much and that would be 2.25 seconds 3 sig figs 3 sig figs 3 sig figs we're good alright